We gonna get ready, fellas. I got some bomb shit for you today. All right. All right, you guys. You know, I've been talking about stuff <clears throat> lately. This got games, about a lot of games and all that shit. But, you know, kind of off the beaten path that I've been normally taking. I, I did a video recently about cheating. And today, I'm going to do one about telling the truth. You motherfuckers. <laughs> you got to understand some shit. And I'm going to tell you, I learned this the hard way. First of all, can, can you imagine a live-ass motherfucker like me who's used to having shit, used to winning, you know, most things, having most things in my life my way. Now, can you imagine... Or can you see me retiring and trying to act as if I was still in the game? That's a question. So when you answer, cool, whatever. But I'm going to really give you some shit to think about. My best friend, uh, my best pimp friend, Shantae Parker and I, we used to uh, live off people that would be trying to pretend, uh, mostly drug dealers. We blow. <laughs> I'm talking about, we was fly ass pimps. I'm talking about seriously fly. And we when we went to get some weed or, or some blow or whatever, most times, them motherfuckers had a gang of bitches. They did. They was letting them blow or whatever. I don't know what they were really doing, but I'm saying they would have two, three bitches around. And these motherfucking bitches, naturally, when we walked in, the, you know, the motherfucking joint jeweled up and looking flat. You know, they want to, ooh. But the nigga who's selling the shit, he's put on his pit cap. Damn. And he's a pimp now. He like start talking this shit. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> but let me tell you something. Those fools would say all the slick, the slick shit that they didn't heard me and Tay say. They be using shit wrong, all that kind of goddamn shit. They was be trying to act as if they, you know, knew what they was talking about. We would laugh at them, but. Because secretly, we knew that that bitch, she was going to be the next motherfucker we had or close to the next one. Because what I'm saying to you, bro, because it ain't got nothing to do with pimp. I ain't really talking about pimp, but I was a pimp, so I got to use my life. But what I'm saying is what the dealer didn't know is real pimps do not simply talk. No. Anything a motherfucker like me say, has a direct line to it. And that's the way your conversation should be. So, otherwise, when I say some fly shit to this dealing motherfucker, and he gonna repeat it, you know, he gonna go repeat it to them broads, he ain't doing nothing but preparing them for me. Because what's gonna happen is some club uh, some uh, supermarket. I don't know. I'm going to see that bitch. We was in Hollywood. I mean, shit. Everybody want to be out, even at the store. <laughs> shit. So once we see, baby, I'll tell you, or maybe all we have to do 
Let's see what the motherfuckers out and about. Without that dealing ass motherfucker with him, and the next time that dealer heard from us, we'd be serving him about that bitch. Now, yeah, Pamela Knight, Susie, or whoever the fuck she is, just chose a nigga with some of that dope money you motherfucking be having, mate. <laughs> I might not have said that last shit. <laughs> I'm saying this to say, me of all people should know better than to try to act like a live pimp when you ain't. I have no problems with my station in life. You know, I, I mean, and in the game, I, I have no problem with where I'm at. Because I accept that I don't have, nor do I desire to have. I, I just don't want to chase hoes no more. That, that's been my decision. Now, knowing that, it should have kind of made my transition to being a square easier. I say easier, not easy. I remember, I'm telling you the truth. I used to pull up to a stoplight when I was, you know, rolling in Hollywood and shit, and people would be staring at me asking me all kind of questions about what I do and who am I and all that. <laughs> I got quite used to that shit. Police would even do it. But something as simple as pulling up to a fucking stop sign is a mind-opening event for somebody like me. <laughs> for years, it took me a couple of years after I retired, I used to expect people to wonder and ask me, you know, the same questions concerning my stash when I pulled up in the uh, <laughs> when I pulled up to the stash. Never mind that I was in the Chrysler. <laughs> what was it, the sea green? Never mind. <laughs> I wasn't Rolls Royce and they had no jewels on us. <laughs> I just used to expect it. Now, I would be at the light, and, and sometimes I'd actually look around just to, you know, it took me a long time to get out of that. I'm, I'm actually telling you something, so you better listen. What I'm saying is, I would be at the light looking around to see who the fuck was noticing me. And to my dismay, nobody was noticing me. See, what you guys don't know is attention is the biggest reason any of us is in the game. And no or not, attention is more powerful than drugs. <laughs> the only thing is not more powerful than is money. Why do you think Junior say all? Oh, remember that motherfucker? Why do you think people like him kill themselves? Because some people can't stand not getting that attention. And once that attention is gone, all they have is themselves to deal with. And that's when you have to realize telling the truth. What I'm saying is when that attention is gone, are you gone? I'm telling you, sometimes people themselves, they're gone when the attention is gone. Junior Seau, rest in peace, and I'm not really talking about him. I'm just remembering his name and he did it. But, but I'm saying, I ain't going to say his name. No, I take Junior Seau back. People that kill themselves when they don't have attention anymore were lying to themselves when they were getting that attention. Please don't take this wrong. I'm not trying to say nothing about Junior Seau. I'm saying maybe they weren't lying to themselves, but they weren't accepting the full truth about themselves. Because what I'm saying is he lost it somehow. The, the, uh, Junior Seau, the star, was more than Junior Seau, the person. And, and 
I, I would imagine he liked being that star. That's how I was. Man, I loved being Rosebud. Hey, who are you? What are you doing? Who almost? Man, that shit. I used to love that shit. But when that shit went away, I still had to, you know, live. I still had to be me. I had to be happy with myself. That's why I'm so insistent on motherfuckers fucking with uh, Sidewalk University. Any lie I catch you in, I'm a clown. And I'm looking for every lie you tell because I know damn well you ain't telling the truth. And, and they be wondering why I do that and why I think like that. But two semesters in, they see it. Man, I was lying to myself so much. You know, yeah, man, you were, but I seen it. That's why you fuck with me. So what I'm trying to tell you, some people, once that attention is gone, they can't live. I used to be miserable in the beginning of being the square. I used to be fucking miserable. I had to realize something God made me realize that I was still expecting what I expected when I was a pimp. And if I didn't want to end up on drugs or being a drunk or whatever the hell, or worse, I better accept that I was becoming, if not already one, a big old ass square. And I can't motherfucking expect what some pimp ass nigga expect. That nigga be pimping like a motherfucker to expect what he expected. Me, I'm a big old square now. This shit. This shit was really important for me. And you need to hear what I'm trying to tell you. Because I didn't want to end up on drugs. So I had to except who gives a fuck that I still got game? Who, who, who gives a fuck that you rose but better than I, I was now depending on writing, and if that's the case, working for my money, as all squares do. So I cannot live or win today's ball game with yesterday's score. This was important for me to realize. Sharp as I am, I should have left out the game knowing that, but I didn't. I left out the game, Rosewood, ain't that bitch. I ain't Rose Royce no more, but you know that same bite. You know, and slowly but surely, that shit was driving me crazy. Now, you pimps do not appreciate how fortunate you are. And you won't. You won't until you're not pimping anymore. However far off into the future that is. I, on the other hand, had to accept that I was no longer having hoes and was no longer going to be the center of attention wherever I went. <laughs> and once I did accept that, I was able to have a life that needed... <laughs> It needed molding, you know, and I, I had to mold it. But what I'm saying is I've been molding this life I lead now ever since I realized what I'm telling you. Now, in the process, I've become a different kind of motherfucker. A motherfucker still. That's all I ever wanted in the first place. Even in my book, Rosebud American Pimp. That's what I put. I, I wanted to be a motherfucker. That's all I wanted ever. I could have been a motherfucker selling dope. I could have been a motherfucker chewing pool, whatever the fuck. I was a motherfucker. That was me. That's me from childhood. I was like that. I don't know why. Now, about this game that we see to master, we all should have already learned by now that we are not simply in the game. 
I don't hear too many emails that scream, oh, is it in me or is it on me, as I once did, which is a good thing. At least now you know that sayings, God, man, don't, when I say the word sayings, man, I, I fucking get to going into all these things you guys just brutalize. But anyway, at least now we know that saying really means something to a person that uses that saying. And just as you realize sayings are just that, sayings, and not one of those sayings will catch you a bitch. Realizing that you want to learn or actually you need to realize that what you learn kicking it with me, it's not going to become any wisdom for you. If you don't employ it, you got to apply it to your life in ways that you don't. You just hear it. See, that's the main thing to get from our interactions, that you cannot just have information and not use it because then it becomes clutter. You don't want no goddamn clutter in your mind. You have to use everything you learn immediately. So what I'm saying is a real motherfucker knows that all the things you and I have talked about were the same thing. Period. I don't give a fuck how many conversations we had. I don't give a fuck how many different topics it was. I don't give a fuck how many subjects we covered in the topic. What I'm saying is this. It all boiled down to the same thing. Taking care of your motherfucking business. Everything pointed in one direction. No matter what subject we spoke on, the direction to take to handle it was straight ahead, representing big game. That's all I preach. That's all I talk about. I don't talk about avoiding. I don't talk about sidestepping, putting it on the back burner. Shit. It's essential to your future. I'm telling you, it's essential to your future to realize that being on your ABPs don't carry you through anything. ABPs always be planned. Or you don't get played. That's just how life is. Shit. Sometimes we're in the fast lane of this game. You know, and, and we switch lanes without using blinkers. I mean, shit, we speed through yellow lights. And, and it looks as if we're not paying any attention to any of the warning signs that the games give you. Excuse me. And, and for the most part, we're seen as being careless or reckless. I mean, that's how people that don't really know see us. That's how we're seen in the eyes of those who observe and aren't really in the know. But being careless, I know this. I live this. Being careless and reckless in the first years of you being down and dirty, it molds you into the machine you're going to become. Because to be reckless without going to jail, without having wrecks, without getting tickets, means you got to be paying attention to everything, even though it seems like you're being reckless. Dudes like us learn how to do that shit. Man, let me tell you something. <laughs> you ain't gonna believe this. We know that, you know, when we're in the fast lane, we should watch the hell out for oncoming problems. And it looks like we ain't doing it, but we do. We just do it so easily and so gracefully the average person would think that we ain't even you know thinking about shit we just drivers but we, we think and our lifestyle promotes doing whatever is the most 
And whatever you can do in whatever situation it is, do the most. So when it comes to driving a car, not only have I not had any goddamn wrecks in my life. Well, yes, I did. When I was in the 12th grade, I had a wreck. But, but what I'm saying is we don't have wrecks. We speed and don't get tickets. We talk on the phone. We talk to three or four motherfucking bitches in the car at the same goddamn time. We know there's other bitches on the street. Why are we talking to these bitches in the car? Why are we speeding? We doing all this shit. And we looking out for the police all at the same time. We doing it all at the same time. That's why we not narrow-minded. That's why we multifaceted. Most motherfuckers think in one linear way. We think multiple ways. And they're all linear. See, we know. We know what we want. We know what we do. And we know what we want ain't happening and we don't do shit. And you better start thinking the same. We are a multifaceted men who only answer to ourselves. Period. And that makes you kind of a daredevil when you, you know, be like that. But this is something I want you all to remember. Because you in because you sharp, you, you know, you alpha and all that shit don't mean that you turn your mind off the fucking information. Whether it has to do with being alpha or not. You got to understand that you got to be able to speak to any person on any level and not belittle yourself with lack of knowledge on whatever subject it is. Believe me, what makes my interviews go so well, no matter what level it's on, is that they, they, they try to sneak in whatever they're trying to sneak in. But I catch it and I'm dealing with it right now. You're fascinating. The the things you yeah, the things I say aren't the things you would imagine a motherfucking pimp saying because of what you think a pimp is, which is why your goddamn daughter is gonna get knocked off by a pimp because you sent her out there looking for Huggy Bear when that motherfucking bitch gonna run into me. <laughs> Man, I love this shit. You, you bring it to them like that. And what does that do? It makes them realize that this shit is not what they think. I ain't talking about being a pimp. I'm talking about being a man. You know, I'm talking about the way they associate shit, the way they make this mean that when it don't. We all have to be sharp. We have to be sharp. You got to be able to speak on any level because you don't know who you're going to run into, especially if you in the streets. I was more politically, socially, and humanely aware than ever when I was in the goddamn street because I didn't you know, know who I was going to run into. And I definitely couldn't predict what the hell they was going to want to talk about. But best believe, I could stand it. And there was one thing for sure that kept me in my comfort zone. And I'm proud of this to this day. Whoever it was, whatever the fuck they wanted to speak about, whatever they wanted to speak about it. The way I looked in my pivot had me prepared. <laughs> That's just how it is. Hold on. You guys know I be, I gotta explain this every once in a while. I be having hay fever, man, and my sinuses get fucked up, and then I can't talk real good. I see you guys got questions, man, but I don't even need to go over them. Come on into this shit. Because I'm talking about some real shit here. And the last time I was talking about some real shit, you motherfuckers actually came through. And then we kicked it. Okay, I'm gonna try. Let's see what's happening. I'm gonna try it, goddammit. Leslie Bain and completely aware with I don't know what the hell he was talking about, but it sounds like y'all talking about something too cool to kind of utilize everybody's and strategize as key. Maestro stacks, you just became a square with super game because that game ain't going nowhere. <laughs> 
a little too bad. <laughs> Marshall Stacks, let me tell you something. You just said some hella shit. Because when I say I had to realize shit, what I had to realize was I left the game. The game didn't leave me. <laughs> That's what I had to realize. That's what I had to accept. I'm still bud. I just didn't have no hoes. Hoes wasn't my identity. Pimping was. But if I ain't pimping, what I'm gonna do? Disappear or get another identity? And my identity that I have now is an educator. Man, come on, you see my shit? Those are real degrees from educating. Uh, whole tab, Quint. I don't know, I can dig it. G the Jen. I know you've been to say some slick, man. Oh, I, I, I probably shouldn't even read your shit. As pimps, we love attention from bitches. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, you kill me, man. But you know what? I'm a cranky. As pimps, we love attention from any motherfucker. Bitches, paw paw, motherfucking dudes. I don't give a fuck. As long as they notice that we cool. Because we ain't dirty. The police fuck with the pull us up. They just gonna waste our time. They gonna waste their time. We ain't dirty. Shit. Uh, but, hey, hey, Jesus. <laughs> as pimps, we, we love attention from this. <laughs> I just love how that sound, motherfucker. Look, when I leave the house without my jewels, I feel naked. <laughs> Even though the jury don't make the pimp, the pimp makes the jury. <laughs> Let me correct you on that one too. <laughs> Niggas say, man, this jury didn't buy me. I bought the jury. The motherfucking jury didn't see me walking by the bottle by the goddamn pine shop or whatever and, and tap on the one who would say, hey, come here. <laughs> no, we walked by, saw that shit, man, that's some fun shit. Then we bought that shit. But you're right, G. J. You know I'm fucking with you, Mike. Uh, Tony Red, fly shirt, Pete. Uh, okay, thanks, bro. Uh, Taylor Knight, attention, more powerful than yours it is. Uh, that was Taylor Knight, Bobby Money, man. I heard the jury district is open. Who gives a fuck? Uh, meant to say the jewels just announced that you arrived. All right, man, I ain't even seen what you said, goddammit. But just hearing the last sentence, the jewels announced you're right. You've been fucking with me, Mike. You can't tell me when you have That's what that Rolls Royce, that's what anything material do, announce your arrival. But it don't speak for you. Can't do shit for you. Can't catch no bitch. Stephen Watson, the jury just announces that the game is in you, not on. <laughs> there you go with that goddamn shit. <laughs> I watch always, preferably watch just demonstrate the ability always to punctual. What? Punctual? Come on, man. You know what you're saying, but I still in the fuck, though. What's the first piece of jury to cop? Doreen. This, Stefan, you want to get blocked. Sucker-ass goddamn shit. What the fuck do you want? Leslie Bay was because you guys speak now. Hey, I don't like what's the best this to do, blah, blah. Man, fuck that bullshit. You motherfuckers is suckers. Everybody that comes to SWU is a sucker, and I got to make them realize that what you say and what you think is it. Period. However many people in the world, that's how many worlds is in the world. Because I'm a world. Every I, I, I'm I'm the ruler of my countries. I'm the ruler of everything. I ain't trying to wonder what I should do. Fuck that. Let's say, dude, you made me sick with that fucking question. 
but let's say you did go buy uh, a, a bracelet. Then you get to see him, man, that bracelet ain't what I should buy. Go buy you something else you think you should get. You motherfucker. Uh, <laughs> let me tell you guys, man. My thing is power. Every motherfucker that fucks with me, one way or another, feels the power. And that power is based in telling yourself the truth. In every instance, none of that fantasy bullshit you motherfuckers said. Man, I wouldn't talk to that bitch, but you know what? I got, man, yeah, right. All that bullshit is lies. You know, if you want to keep lying to yourself, go ahead. If you want to stop, and you don't really know how, because that's why most of you do it, you don't know how to stop, then you need to come to Sidewalk University. Then you need to get late. You, you can't do nothing but improve. Hey, uh, what Trump say? What can, what's the worst that can happen? <laughs> well, but there ain't no worst gonna happen. The best gonna happen. You ain't gonna be nothing like you are now. Period. And you know that's a good thing. All right, you guys. I, I've been kicking it. Um, wait, let me see. Make sure y'all ain't got no more fucking questions here. I might want to answer. No, I don't really see nothing. <laughs> okay, wait a minute, man. It ain't bad. <laughs> uh, okay. Taylor Knight, did writing give you some of the core strength in your transition? No. Nah. Writing, um, uh, open the door for me to actually see how to be bud in another way um, it, 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 it did help in that regard giving me something to chase but no nah, writing they did shit for me yet it, you know i ain't even make no money i make some money selling my books but it ain't no money i ain't even made no money yet you know i want to make some money with my writing yeah bro that was a good question Unbelievable truth. Being super with more strengths and weaknesses is a key to in moving your life forward. I take off my jury for four hours when I box. Oh, I yeah, for four hours when I box. And I run to keep it clean. Bobby Money Man. I sure wish I was young enough. I challenge your motherfucking ass. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. <laughs> I don't know if you remember the mongoose, Archie Moore, light heavyweight champion. I was in that motherfucker's ABC club in Country Club Crest in Vallejo. Uh, what, what is it? He said, who are we? We are the A, B, and C. Concept of moral, physical strength, some shit we used to say. Now, what does ABC mean? Any boy can <laughs> if he wants to. When a task is once begun, never leave it till it's done. If that task is great or small, do it well or not at all. You know, I just remembered that shit from when I was like nine or ten in Anchimo's boxing class. Shit come back to you. You never forget it. Shit comes back. <laughs> uh, top of the Taylor Knight. Thanks, bro. <laughs> hey, bud, what happened to the bud and Tay show? Uh, we ain't really doing that YouTube show. Uh, Bobby Money. Yeah, bud and Tay. Because cause Tay had to come up here. I had to come down there every day. We could do the remote shit. We tried it. But then again, I don't know. It didn't work like we thought. New generation, bud. They need to know you can't half-ass do things. Hey, you're right. 
That's why I motherfucking bring this like I do, bro. I bring it straight from here. I'm real. I don't give a goddamn how you feel about what I'm saying. Because what I'm saying is the truth as I see it. And the only thing you can do is accept it and deal with it as far as changing whatever you don't like about it or accept whatever you hear. That's where I'm at. I don't, I don't give a fuck if you believe me or not. I believe me. I can give a fuck who else believe me. Let me take this last little hit, fellas, on the camera. So this motherfucker said, that nigga just be smoking weed. I do. I've been smoking weed since I was 12. And I'm 67. So that's like 55 years. <laughs> I, I smoke a weed. They could go spend two dollars and get ten joints. <laughs> and the motherfucker was going to give you some more. Shit. Hey, I'm gone, you guys. Be cool.